Hey guys, so I finally received my beautiful Flywoo Hexplorers a bit late. Mine got stuck in the post, so this video will come out um, a few days after most of the other reviews. So what I'm going to do is not focus too much on the spec of this quad, since the other videos already covered that in uh, great detail. Now, also, I think the spec of this isn't actually that interesting because it is basically a Flywoo Explorer with two other motors and everything else being more or less the same. But there are two noticeable differences. So first, it is now running an F7 flight controller, so no more soft serial. Um, no more issues with CPO overloads or glitchy OSDs, so that's a major improvement and I hope this will also find its way into the regular quadcopter version of the Explorer. And there were a few issues with GPS lock on the Vista version because the Vista tends to, um, to block the GPS signal, so Flywoo isolated the wires leading up to the GPS unit, which should solve these issues. But if I'm not going to focus on the specs, what will this video be on about? And in my opinion, it will be on about the most interesting question, which is the why. Why would we want a hexacopter? Why did Fly revive this, uh, in fact, pretty old concept that has been around uh, really since the beginning of uh, multicopters? So that's the question for today. Why would we go for a hex? All right, so let's take a step back. This is the original micro long range that came out roughly a year ago. This is basically um, the template that was used for the Flywheel Explorer. And a year ago, the lowest KV um, 1404 motors we basically had were 3750. That meant that this thing uh, had to run on 3S, so usually 3S 850s or a 3000 milliamp hour 3S lithium ion pack. Now, what happened next was that um, the Flywheel Explorer was developed, and this meant that I could basically come up with a new motor specification. So, the Flywheel Explorer did have um, lower KV motors, 2750 KV, so that allowed to move up to 4S packs, this is a 4S 850. This increased efficiency and flight time quite a bit, around 20% from um, what I experienced in my testing. And also it meant that if we wanted to use lithium ion, we also had to move up to a 4S. Now, the 3S is 160 grams. This is actually you know, quite manageable for a four inch, but Already uh, a 4S lithium ion pack is 209 or 210 grams roughly. That is starting to get quite heavy now. Uh, we have a quad that is, I mean this analog version here is 145 grams, um, the Vista version is 160 grams, so we actually have more battery than quad already at that point. Then something else happened too, now we got naked GoPros, so everybody wanted to add a naked GoPro to, the, to this. So we were talking about roughly 240 grams of load on a quad that is um, possibly only around 150 grams. So this seems quite unbalanced. And on top of that, one of the most frequent questions I got on my YouTube videos was whether the Explorer can carry a full-size GoPro. So you were talking about another 120 grams. So if you put a full-size GoPro plus a lithium ion pack on the Explorer, um, battery and the camera, the sort of payload would roughly um, be twice as much as the dry weight of the quad. So that means we are moving into, um, you know, disc load, so weight relative to the prop area that really isn't quite healthy anymore. It does still fly without any issues. It's still got enough thrust to lift all that weight, but it does start to impact flight performance and it also does start to impact efficiency because increased disc load, so a lot of weight on a small disc area, does mean the efficiency is starting to go down. So it's not ideal anymore. So basically, what we want to do is increase the disc area. All right, so to get more disc area relative to a 4-inch, there's basically two things we can do. First, 
we can do what basically I did with the mini long range, which is to move up in prop size. This is a five inch quad. Um, and it does because of its significantly larger disc area does carry a naked GoPro full size GoPro plus a lithium ion pack much better than a four inch. It is roughly uh, 210 grams dry with the Vista unit, so it's around 40 to 50 grams heavier than the 4 inch. Now, moving up in prop size is not the only option, and this is here where Flywoo started thinking outside of the box and moved up to a hex. So the effect is basically, and that's pretty interesting, the exact same. So the prop area of 4 or 5 inch props is really more or less equivalent to the prop area of six um, four inch props. The difference is around 4%. So the disc area on the hex is 4% smaller. So bottom line, it's really pretty much the same. Interestingly, the dry weight of these quads is also the same. They're both around 200, uh, 210 grams. So in effect, this is basically, basically two ways of accomplishing the same objective of having an increased disc area while still having a very light quad. Now, the downside of this is obviously for both of them, you sort of have to say goodbye to your sub 250 goal. So it's really not possible to get these sub 250 gram with any battery that is flyable. But on the other hand, it was basically um, the same with the 4 inch. So the 4 inch with a lithium ion pack that is 210 grams, well, obviously was above 250. If you have a 210 gram battery, you're never going to be sub 250. So I would say if you want to use lithium ion, you'll have to, you'll have to abandon the two, sub 250 objective anyway. So why not slightly move up in this area and have something that performs better, better. Now still, obviously, if you need to go sub 250, and this does have a lot of advantages in many countries in terms of regist registration, um, you know, legal topics and so on. The four inch is still the best option. The four inch with an 854S is sub 250. So this is, in my opinion, still the best performing sub 250 platform. But if the sub 250 goal isn't too important and you're going for really maximum flight times, then considering five inch or a hex is really the way to go. Okay, so now, but what is the better solution? Is it better to go for a hex or is it better to go for a light five inch? And here I have to say, um, the difference aren't actually that huge. It also yeah, basically comes down to personal preference to a certain degree. Because I would say one of the main advantages of the hex is it's just really pretty cool. It's got sort of a, you know, it's something different, something you, you haven't seen before in a four inch. Now it's really got this, you know, I want one factor and that's actually quite cool. The other advantage is it seems to have increased um, stability. So you could put this negatively and say it's a bit stiff when flying it, but also, you know, it sort of feels like on rails. This really wouldn't help on for freestyle or uh, racing, but it actually does help when you're trying to fly as smooth of a line as possible. So here it's very suitable. But again, the differences are subtle between the five inch and the, the hex. It, it's not a night and day difference. One advantage that is still to be confirmed is that, uh, well, you have more redundancy in the hex. So six props, six motors, six ESCs. This thing can actually handle, at least in theory, failing motors, uh, props falling off, ESCs failing. So again, if these two motors fail, for example, you're still left with a quadcopter. Um, if this motor here in the rear fails, probably it's still, um, in theory, able to, uh, you know, maintain uh, more or less stability and, and limp home. Now, one thing that is to be confirmed is whether Betaflight in its current version actually has the right algorithms or the capabilities to make use of that redundancy and um, still make this quad fly. That is something I'm going to test in a different video, but in theory, this is an advantage of a hex. But that's, that, that's about it uh, regarding to the differences. Now, there is a 
maybe there are like one and a half downsides to this, one downside as well. Obviously props in view is really quite extreme. So you don't only have props in view, you literally have motors in view. You can't see these motors spinning here. Now, I would say this for me, it's, it's, it's so, the props in view is so extreme, the motors in view that already for me, it's something that could, you know, already be cool. <laughs> It's sort of funny to see your motor spinning. So I would say some people are going to think that it's really annoying to see the props in the motors. I personally think it's kind of cool to see, you know, um, see the quad around you. I, I didn't think it was annoying or, or bad or not as immersive. I sort of, you know, sort of enjoyed it. Um, but some people might see this as a downside. Of course, on the mini longer here, you're going to have a very, very slight bit of props in view because I didn't want to make this dead cat layout too extreme, but overall, a very little props in view. Here, of course, it's, the props in view are massive. Now, other slight uh, disadvantages, well, it cruises slightly, uh, slightly slower, but I think it feels like it's better for proximity. That might equalize this a little bit. It's slightly slower, really slightly, than the five inch. Um, you might say that having three different sets of arms is a disadvantage because you're gonna, you're gonna have to keep more spare parts. But I think this is not a freestyle basher. It's not a racer. You're not going to break anything very often on the long range cruiser. For me, for me, this really isn't a um, you know. A, a practical disadvantage that is going to annoy you a lot in that case. One thing that is still to be confirmed is the efficiency of the hex versus the five inch. So here, honestly, my hypothesis would be that it is probably going to be quite similar, but that's something I still need to find out. But overall, from, from what I tested so far, I don't expect there to be a very significant um, difference that is actually noticeable over over the usual variation that you're gonna have, you know, because you never manage your throttle perfectly. You're always gonna have variation in flight time. So overall, I assume, and I will test this, I assume you're not going to notice much of a difference in terms of flight time between these two. All right, so I think we covered the question of why you would go for a hex quite well now. The next interesting question is obviously, I mean, how does this thing fly? Is it that much different compared to a five inch? Um, how does it handle? How does the control feel? So let's look at some fly footage and let's discuss actually the flight characteristics of exactly this quad that I flew with, um, with a lithium ion pack and this naked GoPro here. So. That's what you're going to see in terms of flight footage. So I would say that is pretty much fully loaded. I could put a full GoPro on there, but again, I don't see much of an, of an advantage of using a full GoPro here, unless you really don't want to go through the process of stripping your, uh, your GoPro. So let's check out the flight footage. All right, so what you're seeing here is really literally the first pack I flew with it. Now, I wasn't really planned to do this uh, in the middle of a forest, but I just walked by this spot and thought it was cool. So plugged in the battery and got going. And right from the beginning, I felt pretty much at home. It's very easy to handle, uh, very in control. There's very little drift or, you know, things you wouldn't expect happening. It's really like, best to describe it, like on rails. It's a very consistent, very, very little drift, very in um, in control. So this looks to me almost a bit Cinewhoop-like, although I think it handles much uh, much better than a Cinewhoop. So immediately I had no trouble flying uh, in the proximity of all these trees, although this is something I really wouldn't <laughs> recommend you do, uh, made it in any quad. But again, immediately super comfortable. And as you can see, this thing is just extremely, extremely stable and consistent and easy to control. No problem at all flying this through all these trees. And I don't know if you can really judge from the footage, but the most noticeable difference in my opinion is sort of the lack of, uh, of drift. It's not drifting, you know, left or right when I'm, uh, when I'm doing turns. I need to incline the quad just very, very slightly to do these turns. So I would assume this is in any case, uh, for one for one reason for this is due to the decreased uh, disc load, which um, decreases the amount I need to tilt the quad to make a turn. But also, it seems, in my opinion, to be somewhat related 
to the additional props, maybe to the large footprint a hex has. So the props are quite far away from the body. I would say this might give it this feeling of uh, stability and um, you know holding a direction you give it no matter um, no matter what's re what's really happening so i would say this is for cruising and getting cinematic footage this is in any case a huge advantage and i really enjoy it um, how it uh, how it handles all right so after doing the first pack uh you know in the middle of a forest i found an even stupider spot to fly on which was this more or less frozen lake, wasn't fully frozen, so, um, you know, if I had to recover the quad on the ice, I wouldn't be able to, wouldn't, wouldn't um, you know, support my weight. So, even worse <laughs> spot for flying, you know, the first few packs with a quad you're not accustomed to. So, don't recommend this, but, um, and you know, I needed some cool footage for this video. And here I have to say, um, you know, if you're really doing some long range cruising, some faster cruising, yes, it does move slightly slower than a five french but it's really really slightly so so little that i'm not even sure if uh, you know um i'm correctly de detecting it um apart from that here again this extreme stability of the quad is a huge asset it makes it very very easy to get extremely smooth footage now i'm also flying very slow rates but for some reason this quad makes it extremely easy to have smooth transitions uh, when you're giving it stick inputs, you know, it never looks choppy or, um, you know, moving too fast. Also, of course, the stabilization of the GoPro helps here, but it's really not on, not the GoPro equalizing this. This thing is as stable as it looks. And as you see, it's very easy to fly low over this surface, very, very close and very consistently. I'm not moving up or down. The quad, you know, isn't drifting in any, any direction. And for this kind of flying, I think this is an absolutely perfect platform. So, uh, but what about freestyle? Yes, it can freestyle. It's absolutely capable of doing it. I didn't do it in this video. Now it does freestyle better than the quadcopter version. It's got more power, but again, Flywheel is correct advertising this as having more freestyle capabilities, but still, I think it's not a platform that is well adapted to flying freestyle simply because it is very light and is not something I think you can, you know, sort of bash in the way you would um, bash an actual freestyle platform. All right, now, but what's the overall conclusion of uh, this testing? I would say overall, it's actually very simple because, well, if you want to stick to the goal of being sub 250 gram all up weight, you'll have to stick with the sort of classic micro long range platform with a light four inch with a lithium polymer battery. This is the only way you can be sub to 50 while still having good flight times of over 15 minutes and uh, you know long range and enjoy the sort of new kind of, of flying that you get with these long flight times. It is very well described in the video of Joshua Bartwell, the initial review of the Explorer that you probably saw. Now, but if you don't care too much about the sub 250 uh, limit or, you know, it's, it's not specifically well enforced in your country or isn't even relevant from a legal point of view, well then you might consider moving up to these platforms here because they will allow you to easily carry a 4S lithium ion pack and increase flight times without, um, you know, without impacting flight performance in a significant way and even be able to carry some more extra payload like a naked GoPro with ease or a, um, you know, a full-size GoPro. Now, keep in mind, all of this can be carried by the 4-inch as well, but you will then also be over sub-250, so over 250 grams all up weight, and you will impact the flight performance quite a lot, which you will not really do with these. So I would say this is what it boils down to. Well, do you really want to, uh, you know, carry some extra payload? Do you want flight times of more than 20 minutes? And do you care about the goal of being sub to 50 all up weight all right guys um well hopefully you found this interesting and don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and leave a comment if you have any questions or comments let me know what you think do you agree on my assessment or not would be interesting for me leave a comment bye bye